Hello and welcome back to Bible Nuggets. I'm Andy Blaylock, joined by Brother Chris Hamm. Hello again. Good to have you again. Our theme verse is Matthew 4.4, 4, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now today we're going to look at a really highly misunderstood person in the Bible. Yes. We're going to look at the person of Melchizedek. Mm. Now it it's really a shocking to me that there's so much misunderstanding about him as I, I think the Bible's pretty clear on who he is and why he came. Yeah, yet for some reason, a lot of commentaries go way off the reservation on this yeah, one. Yes, they do. <laughs> but we're going to look really today strictly at the Bible account of this person. Yes. And we have to begin where he's introduced to us in Genesis chapter 14 when Abraham meets Melchizedek. Mm. Brother Andy, would you read for us uh, chapter 14, verses 18 through 20? Yeah. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Now that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Three verses here in, in Genesis 14, and... Then we're not even going to see another mention of him again until yeah. we're really well into the book of Psalms. That's true. But there's plenty here to look at to begin with. Yes, that's true. The first thing we see is that he is a king. King of where? King of Salem. Better known to us as what today? Jerusalem. That's right. The city of peace. Yeah. Of course, there really hasn't been any peace uh, in Jerusalem for a really long time. <laughs> That's true. Probably not since Melchizedek was the king there. <laughs> That's probably right. Yeah. Well, what else do we see there? We also see that Melchizedek is a priest of the Most High God. That's right. Now, let me ask this. Where are the Levitical priests at this time? Well, they're not there yet. <laughs> no, they're <laughs> it's not. Simply, Abraham is going to have a son, Isaac, who's going to have a son, Jacob, who is going to have 12 sons, including a son named Levi. It is through Levi that the Levitical priests are formed centuries in the future at the giving of the law. Very good. So uh, what we're saying really is that Melchizedek was a priest before there were any Levitical priests. <laughs> yes. Long before Aaron, Yep. long before Levi, and centuries before the giving of the law. Yeah, that's that's true. We also see, though, that Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, and Melchizedek blessed Abraham. So Abraham clearly viewed Melchizedek as having spiritual authority over him. That's right. That's right. But I want to make sure that our listeners realize that there was a priest in the Bible before the Levitical priesthood. Mm. Let's call this the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood order of Melchizedek. Yeah, that's good. Were there any other priests in the Bible before the Levitical priests? Well, not priests from God's calling. Yeah. There were people no. named priests. You had Potiphar, he was the priest of On, mm -hmm. that was an Egyptian cult, Yes. whose daughter Joseph married. And there was Jethro, the priest of Midian, who was Moses' father-in-law. Yep. But neither of these were priesthoods that were established by God in the Bible. No. Okay, so Melchizedek is the only biblical priest before we get to Aaron and the rest of the Levitical priests. And that's right. And so we have another type of priesthood in the Bible other than the Levitical priesthood, hmm. which was established before yep. the Levitical priesthood. So how many priests were in this order of Melchizedek? Well, that's a great question. And that leads us really into the depth of today's Bible nugget. Yeah. Psalm 110 verse 4 gives us the next mention and really the last Old Testament mention of Melchizedek when God simply proclaims hmm. about the coming Messiah. He says this, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever hmm. after the order of Melchizedek. Yes. Hebrews 5.10 tells us that Christ is called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And that's true, but we don't really fully learn the order, I'm sorry, the identity of yeah. Melchizedek until the seventh chapter of the book of Hebrews. Yeah. Brother Andy, would you read for us uh, verses one through three of that chapter? Yeah. 
For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God abideth a priest continually. Melchizedek is Jesus. That's right. The appearance of Melchizedek in the book of Genesis is what we refer to theologically as a Christophany. Yes, that is a pre-incarnate visit of the Lord Jesus to earth. There are a number of these in the Old Testament, but this might probably, probably is the most important. (laughs) Well, it likely is the most important because (laughs) Jesus is coming to establish the priesthood that he will be in for how long? Yeah, according to verse 17, (laughs) forever. (laughs) That's right. But now the real glory of this Bible nugget. Why? Yeah. Why did Jesus need to establish this priesthood at all? It's a great question. For one, whenever a priest would die, his priesthood would end. So if Melchizedek had simply been a man and then he died, well, then the priesthood of Melchizedek would have ended. That's good. That's, that's, that's true. But I want you to also think about this. Hmm. Could a king could a king ever serve as a Levitical priest? Hmm. No. <laughs> Very <laughs> simply, no. God clearly stated that on numerous occasions. In fact, Saul got in trouble for that very reason. That's right. But Jesus, think about this, Jesus is going to, really, he's going to need to be both our king and our priest. Yes. So he could never be a priest after the order of Levi. Mm. So he needed to establish a priesthood that could have a priest who could be both king and and priest. In fact, remember this. Remember way back in Genesis 14, Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of the Most High God. He was both both a king and a priest. Mm. And this is the priesthood that Jesus is going to establish. And by the way, he remains the only priest who has ever served in that priesthood. It's amazing. It is truly, we don't use this word all, you know, all, often, but it is truly awesome and amazing to think about what God has right. provided through his son, Jesus Christ. Not just the New Testament, That's Old right. Testament as well. Truly wonderful. Amen. That was maybe a misunderstood nugget, but a great nugget to go through. So Very good. appreciate that. Hope has been a blessing to you, and we'll see you next time. God bless. God bless.